Hello and welcome to the Film Talks at the 62nd Nordic Film Days Lübeck. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu den Film Talks bei den 62. Nordischen Filmtagen Lübeck. I'm very happy to introduce my guest to you. She is known for her recent films, uh, How to Pick Berries. It's a short film that has been screened at the Nordic Film Days Lübeck in 2010. Uh, she also made a film that's called Purity and Danger, that was in 2017. It's a film about sex workers in Finland. And now she's at the festival with her recent documentary, which is called Lady Time or Neiti Aika, if I have pronounced the Finnish title correct. And I'm very happy to meet Elina Talvinsari. Hello, Elina. Hello. Yes, nice to be here. <laughs> so nice to have you here. Well, I would like to know some of, uh, well, I do have some questions for you, of course. Um, and when I think about the film Lady Time, then um, would you say that it is correct if I say that the story for this film kind of stumbled into your life? Exactly. Yeah, it stumbled into my life. I, I wasn't looking for a for... A film. I was working on, on Purity and Danger at the time and yeah this just happened to me and yeah I, I haven't done documentary like that before but this time I felt this urge to make it. <laughs> so Circa Lisa which the film is all about died in 2012. The film premiered at the documentary festival in Amsterdam in November last year. So how long did it take to make this film? Well, yeah, a lot of years passed while, while making this, but um, first when we moved in the, into the apartment, um, of course I was like, ah, when I saw that it was full of her things that oh, I really should um, film this, but at the time it wasn't possible. So uh, bit by bit, I had this idea that I could still make a film about it. And first it was going to be a short film, mainly about the things that were left in the apartment. But um, as she kind of invaded our uh, private space at home, I, 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 had, I really had to know who she was. So I started doing this um, research on her just for myself. And um, I found out so many things that finally I thought like, okay, yes, I can make a film, a film about this. Uh, and uh, I think it was 2016 when I really started writing it. Before that, I was doing research on my free time and, and just for myself, but then I really started working on the film. But it took a long time, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and um, is it common in Finland that wh whoever buys a flat or a house uh, also gets all the things that the former owner has left if there are no inheritance? No, not at all. No, this is not normal. <laughs> um, uh, what happened in this case was that uh, a lot of people wanted to buy the apartment because it's in a very popular area and um, we also really wanted it and we couldn't offer much more money than was asked so our offer was that ah we can empty the apartment so that would save the time and energy from the uh, seller so that's what we did not knowing what <laughs> what would happen because of that but yeah that's how we got got the things yeah. <laughs> okay i see you um, and so how did you actually start your research about Sir Kalisa's leave, uh, life? <laughs> well, first, uh, you know, we had all these photos at home, all these albums. And first, I didn't even know who was the person who was living in the apartment. So I don't know, somewhere I found uh, like a tree of her family and was kind of trying to match ages and, and you know, it was just like a puzzle trying to have some sort of picture who was living there and if she was married or not and things like that. And then I started to look into the things and trying to find like, uh, like when, where they made, when, where they made, like, um, for example, there was one uh, a cooking book 
handwritten uh, very nicely, not even one mistake. It was written in 1890 or something like that. And, you know, then you start looking like, ah, oh, that year, what happened? Where could this be? And yeah, little by little, I found out things. But of course, the moment when I went to the museum, that is also in the film, and found all these letters, that was, of course, a big change in the the whole thing then I really got to know something not only guessing <laughs> yeah right so at what point did you decide to become the narrator of the film like the off voice and also to put yourself in front of the camera well uh quite early on I I had my voice on the I, I had planned to have my voice in the film because you know the main character ha was dead <laughs> and um, um, it would have been impossible to tell the story just by shooting things because you know when you show a thing it's just a thing you have to in this kind of film you really have to know how to look at it but then uh, when we were developing the film it was we were thinking a lot like if I should be in front of the camera or not and in the end we made this sort of compromise that I'm there but I'm not like telling anything to the audience I'm just sort of there as a, it's like my view it's like me watching the things so so it's kind of we wanted to highlight that it's my view on Sirka Lisa that it's not objective it's what I'm finding out and how I see her so but it was it was mainly because you know you need to have somebody to relate to and as you, it's really hard to relate to someone you don't know, then it was kind of necessary that I would be in the film. And also because the film wasn't only about circles, it was the main reason for me to do the film was, was all these emotions that um, this whole situation um, kind of made me feel like all these questions about like, uh, when are we gonna disappear and, and and is this really just this and and then we'll be forgotten and how to deal with you know the deal with the time how, how to deal with the fact that time is ending for all of us like sooner or later so so these kind of um, big questions were the things that I really wanted to deal with in this film so so that's why I had to be there <laughs> Okay, and so did your way of thinking about that if somebody dies and then there's no one to remember that person is like gone if you throw away all the things, did that opinion that you might have had changed during making the film? Um, maybe, but um, because I kind of know that there's nothing in the things but it's a feeling that because there's nothing else left i i think we humans have this um tendency that we need something concrete something we can if we want to remember somebody we need something to look at when we think about that person so in that way i think it's important to keep some of those things and um mm, yeah at least oh, i don't know uh, for example uh, gravestones on graveyards i think think that's what they are for that we could go there and remember somebody if there's nothing we can go or nothing we can have in our hands it's really hard to sort of keep somebody in our minds for at least for longer than some years so in a way it has, hasn't changed although of course i know that I, i'm not keeping her, all her stuff anymore now i'm able to <laughs> throw some of them away but yeah, it's, it's a hard question. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, well, you just mentioned Sir Kalisa stuff. And in the film, you also mentioned that you were keeping quite a lot of things that she had. Um, so what are the things that you still have that once belonged to her? A lot of things, uh, some furniture, um, a lot of, you know, coffee cups and, and other kitchen utensils most of what we have are circalisas and buttons of course <laughs> and <laughs> needles and 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 all sorts of things you need for sewing things and 
yeah, a lot of like these everyday little things. Um, we still have a lot of them. But the problematic things I still have are, for example, Bibles that she had a lot of them. And I'm not a religious person, but they have these uh, really personal, you know, markings in them. So I feel bad to throw them in a, in a rubbish, but I don't need them myself. So I really don't know what to do with them. So I still have like, I don't know, eight boxes of things that I don't know what to do with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe some idea turns up what to do with uh, those things. Yeah, I know. And the photos also. I mean, yeah, I, I might keep some just for memory, but but there are a lot of photos. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> maybe the museum would like to have them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, so you had photos by Sirka Lisa. Uh, you also had eight millimeter films that she and her husband had made. But um, I thought when I was watching the film that you might also have used some archive material, like when you talk about Sirka lives during the war. The war. So um, where did you get that material from? Well, it's from the Finnish archives, I think. Um... I don't know which one, but there's a lot of archives in Finland that keep this kind of material. Uh, so we just went going through them and trying to find um, sort of things that match with the photos we had. So um, yeah, just normal archives like from the TV and and um, some film archive and so on must have been a long journey to find like just the scenes that you wanted to use. Well, well, yes, but um, fortunately, there's not that much material of that time because everything was filmed on film and, and not everything has been digitalized. So, so there wasn't enormous amount of uh, material from those certain times. So, uh, so it was still manageable to, to try and go through them. So um, in one of the last scenes of the film, your children are actually seen on scene. Well, they are in the film also um, in several season, um, scenes as you talk about you moving into that flat. Um, so how much do they know about Sir Kalisa and her life? Well, uh, um, when we talk about Sir Kalisa at home, we refer to her as, as the home grandmother. <laughs> Kind of so, <laughs> she is present in, in, in the talks, um, and they somehow know that the because we don't live in this apartment anymore. But they know that apartment is somehow very special. Every time we, we we live very close to it, and every time we pass it, we talk about it, and it's like she's somehow present in our life. And also, like in Christmas, we go and uh, put a candle on her grave and things like that. So she's kind of present in, in our life. Although it's funny because not none of us has really met her, but <laughs> but she still kind of became a part of our family in some some funny way. Yeah, sounds like she became some kind of a family friend, even if she already was dead when you like met her. Yeah, of course for me, because I, I went through such big questions like the first time in my life through her. So for me, she feels like 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 a good friend who taught me things. <laughs> and of course, I know this is kind of imaginary relationship, but it's still important. And 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 on the other hand, I like after the film uh, was showing in Finland, I met a couple of people who really knew Sirka Lisa. They sent me letters, and I've met some of them, and and they told me that the picture I'm giving of her in the film is very accurate that she was really like that and 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 for example that their marriage really was happy so it wasn't only my my imagination and and so in some way i think i managed to know her a little bit anyway although she was dead of course not very very deeply obviously because she couldn't tell me about her feelings or anything but again i still feel that she's kind of my my friend that's great. And so, um, as I mentioned, the film premiered last November, so it must have been shown in Finland also. You just told us um, how 
Sirkalisa's friends reacted? How was the reaction in general? Oh, the, it has been so well received. I've been really, it's been amazing. <laughs> in Finland, especially, of course, it's just, um, everything happens in Finland and there's a lot of kind of scenes that are part of our collective memory in Finland. So it, it, it has maybe more, even more kind of points uh, to what you can relate to in the film in here in Finland. So, but it's been uh, received very well. People seem to be quite emotional about the film, which, because when I was doing it, I knew that I was feeling very emotional about many things uh, in the whole thing. But I wasn't sure if, if I could, if I managed to deliver it to the audience also. But it seems that that for many it, it has spoken. <laughs> yeah, for me it did absolutely, and I also felt that it was a very warm film and um, nice, like following you, getting to know more about Silka Lisa's life. So I really enjoyed watching it. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> So nice to hear. Yeah, and of course, I hope that also the audience at the Nordic Film Days Lübeck will like it. Um, if there's anything special that you would like to tell them, please feel free to do so. Oh, <laughs> this came so quickly. Um, <laughs> I really hope you enjoy the film and, and um, um, watch until the end. <laughs> I think the end is the most rewarding part of the film. So, so the pace is quite slow, but I, I think in the end it's rewarding. So please watch until the end. Yeah, I can only agree to what you just said. You have to watch the film until the end. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot for talking with me about your movie. I really enjoyed it. I hope that everyone else enjoys it too. And well, I hope that uh, you maybe are already working on new projects and will bring them to the Nordic Film Days. I hope so. I would really love to visit the festival like in real life, but this is of course nice too, but, but yeah, I try to make a film that could bring me to Lübeck. It would be so nice. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. So I hope that uh, with any future film that you're making, we might be able to see each other in person in Lübeck. That will be great. <laughs> I hope so too. And have a lovely festival there. It was Thank nice. You. Talk. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. So bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>